Welcome to r slash choosing beggars where other people expect you to pay for their wedding. My husband and I are looking for someone to play the harmonica while we have sex. No weirdos, please. I feel like there are probably three or four people out there on planet Earth and this exact thing is their one fetish and they're like, oh my god, this is my moment. Best price for the four player? Hey, $2,195. All prices are on the website. Prices are fixed. Nah, I won't pay that much. No problemo. So what's the best price? $2,195. All prices are on the website. Prices are fixed. No, too expensive. I'm trying to negotiate a price. Sorry, all prices are fixed unless you're ordering five or more. Are you a chatbot? Uh, yes. I want to speak to a real person. I am real, sir. No, you're not. You keep repeating a script. Customer service. Complaints. Put me through to customer service. Put me through to complaints. I want to speak to management. Real person, please. Speak to a real person. Putting you through to a real person now? Hi, I'm a real person. I've looked at your query. Prices are all under the ads, fixed and not negotiable, unfortunately. Surely you can do better on price. Unfortunately, Grant, prices are fixed, just like any other store. So, no best price? Unless you're ordering five or more, sorry mate. I want two. That's two times $2,195. That's the price on the website? Best price for two? Sorry, I misunderstood. That would be $2,195 times two. No discount for two? Wait, are you a bot? To proceed further, you'll need to prove you're not a robot. F you and your stupid machines. Please type in the word that appears in this image. Donghead, you are a bot. Invalid CAPTCHA, please type in the word that appears in this image. And to ensure that no one here is a bot, please complete this CAPTCHA before continuing the video. Seriously? With the thousands upon thousands of dollars being raised and food being collected? This is what the Fredericton Food Bank gave us for Christmas dinner. I am stunned. Not even a bottle of juice for my children? Please don't get me wrong. I'm forever grateful to have the resource of the food bank. But I want to know where all that money and food went to. A turkey, a five pound bag of potatoes, two boxes of stuffing, a bag of carrots, a bag of apples, and a bag of oranges, one can of string beans, one can of cranberry sauce, and one loaf of bread, one box of chocolates, and a dozen sugar cookies. Why didn't we even get juice or butter? Guys, I know she seems like a choosing beggar, but please don't get her wrong. She's forever grateful. You can just feel the gratitude dripping from this post. So if anything, she's a grateful beggar. Woman in line in Costco, totally nonchalant, to return her Christmas tree because it is dead on January 4th. I saw the whole thing go down with my own two eyes about 30 minutes ago. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe that someone had so little moral values or lack of conscience. Ho ho ho, what do you want for Christmas, choosing beggar? Santa, I want every single gift on this list, and on top of that, I expect you to pay me for every single Christmas decoration that I put up because basically I put them up for you, so realistically, you should be the one who pays me for them. Review, one star. My son took a $1 chocolate bar and the manager demanded I pay the money? Made him cry over $1. The audacity of some people. They just won't let me steal. What's wrong with these people? This happened a few years ago during the summer when I was working part-time at my parents' house. My stepsister, the choosing beggar, had asked me if I could watch her kids for a few hours at her apartment. I jumped at the opportunity to be out of my parents' house and just relax, especially since she said the kids, ages 2 and 3, would already be asleep for the night. Note that I did this without pay because I knew she couldn't afford to pay me. I get there around 9 p.m. She waves goodbye and says she'll be back in a few hours. The three hours are fine. I'm just chilling in the living room, watching movies, and messing around on my phone. My nephews stay asleep. Around 1 a.m., I text her asking what her ETA is. She texts me within minutes, saying she's running late. 
Whatever, it's not like I have to get up early. I feel myself dozing off, so I lie down and decide to take a nap. I wake up to the sound of crying and go check on the nephews. The two-year-old is awake and being fussy. I glance at the clock at the bedside and am shocked when I realize it's 6 in the morning. I check my phone and my mom has called me and texted me asking if I ended up staying the night. There are no messages from my sister. I immediately call her while playing with younger nephew while older nephew is now awake attempting to climb up my leg. She doesn't answer. Instead, I get a text from her saying she's in Colorado, not our state. She won't be back for three days and oh, you've got to take care of the kids. They've got nowhere else to go, it's just for three days. At this point, I know I've been set up, and I text her if she is not home in the next five hours, I will have to take the kids to their grandparents, not my parents, who both happen to be busy, but estranged dad's parents. I tell her I'm sure they'd be more than happy to take them both since they never get to see them. She's instantly texting me paragraphs telling me I'm not allowed to take her kids there. They judge her and they have no respect for her. Not true. She just hates them because of her baby daddy. She tells me if I take them there, she will sue me, put me in jail for stealing her children, blah blah. I tell her that she shouldn't have abandoned me with her kids then. The following conversation occurs, to the best of my knowledge. You agreed to take my kids. You're therefore responsible for them. You can't give them to someone else. I agreed to three hours. I'm 18 years old and you left me with really young kids. I have work this evening. I can't watch them for three days. Come back now or I'll take them to their grandparents. They'd be happy to take them. I can't believe you're making such a big deal out of this. I'm giving you my apartment for three days and you get to spend time with your nephews. You should be paying me for the apartment. You're so selfish. Wow, okay, I already called grandparents. They're free to take them, so that's where they're going. I'm taking your children to grandparents. Don't ask me again to watch your kids. You effing grunt. If I was your full sister, you'd do it, you butthole. All you care about is yourself. You won't even spend time with your nephews. Effing piece of doo-doo. I hope you rot in heck. At this point, I ignore her. Call the grandparents who are more than happy to take them for a few days. They come and pick them up and I leave. When she gets back from the trip, she stayed the whole three days. She shows up at my parents' house and starts cussing me out. My parents kick her out and I don't see her for the rest of the summer. I really love how this woman's like, You can't just dump my kids on someone without permission. That's child kidnapping and I'll sue you. Meanwhile, it's totally okay for her, their actual mother, to dump her kids on someone without permission and then go off and do who knows what. I'm guessing like a music festival or something. Or maybe she's just doing typical entitled parent stuff like demanding that people sign their house over to her. My husband was asked to be the best man at his longtime best friend's wedding. We didn't get along super great with his fiance, but they were a package deal, and of course we wanted to show support. My husband and I live in a major city, and his friend lives in a small town a few hours away, so when it came time for wedding clothes shopping, they came into the city and stayed with us. The friend, his fiance, her BFF, and her mom. The fiance invited me to go with them to pick out the wedding dress and the bridesmaid dresses, as I was the only one not in the bridal party, I thought this was just to be inclusive. I went along and after everything was picked out, the fiancé put her nose about an inch away from my nose and said, Will you be one of my bridesmaids? I was caught really off guard and felt like I had no choice but to say yes. This girl is the kind of person who gets her feelings hurt anytime she hears no. Like, even if she invites you to something with no notice and you already had plans. If you say no, it's going to be weeks of drama and pouting. So, I stammered something about how flattered I was and suddenly I was stuffed into a mermaid green monstrosity of a bridesmaid's dress. When it came time to pay for the dresses, I was told that we were expected to buy our own dresses. The dress she had picked out for us to wear was 125 bucks. This was an unexpected expense, but I kind of sighed and pulled out my card. Then, when they were buying the wedding dress and mother-in-law's dress, their card didn't work. Tried three times, declined. So, I had to pay, and they said they'd hit me back later. Another 450 bucks. The best man clothes were also a fiasco. 
The groom decided on formal tuxedos with tails and top hats. The rental on that ended up being 200 bucks, plus 50 bucks for a top hat, which I guess we had to buy and couldn't rent. But that's cool. Totally lots more occasions that would call for a top hat, right? So that was that until the week of the wedding. We bypassed a lot of the wedding showers and engagement parties as we were not living in the same area and could not drive down every other week. We did come down the week before for me to attend the bachelorette party and my husband to host the bachelor party and we stayed till the wedding. I spent about $200 on bachelorette party gifts as another bridesmaid asked me to pick something up for her too. And she wanted me to buy these glass sex toys that were decidedly not cheap. Obviously, she didn't pay me back and I was getting used to that. The groom is a gamer nerd so they had a LAN party for the bachelor party. The only expense we ended up running for that was alcohol which ended up being about 300 bucks. It became increasingly obvious through the week that no planning had gone into the wedding itself. The city park had been reserved but no chairs or decorations had been arranged for it and the food and cake were all going to be do it yourself. It took an army of everyone involved, aside from the bride and groom, of course, to make all the finger sandwiches, baby quiches, mini cheesecakes, and other nibbles required. It was the height of summer in the south, and hauling 100 folding chairs and stringing twinkle lights and flowers in above 100 degree weather was indescribably frustrating. Nobody in their right mind would plan an outdoor wedding in July in our area and also select ultra formal clothing. No. The bride was two hours late to her own wedding. She had her friend come and do all of our hair and she expected to be paid $50 each at the end. Money is just hemorrhaging out of me at this point and I'm in such a state of exhaustion and shock that I no longer care. The wedding happens, everyone seems happy. My husband and I were preparing to drag ourselves home to recuperate physically and financially. Then the bride stops me, she grabs my arm. Oh, I think. This is where she thanks us for helping to make her big nightmarish day a success. No such luck. She is crying and shaking with anger, and she says, I guess you didn't get me a wedding present. Just so you know, when someone invites you to a wedding, you are supposed to get them a present. I froze, and I could not close my mouth. I'm sorry, what? She got dragged off to take such and such picture and I was still standing there failing to compute what had just happened to me. We just left, couldn't really say bye or anything. I was just so done. The car ride home was so much repeating what had happened to each other and just being at a loss. We needed a lot of time to just process how much of a ride we'd been taking on with no thank you, no apologies. Actually, they were just completely ungrateful and thought we'd scammed them out of a wedding present. I feel like I need to add that we are not rich. We're a young working couple who basically emptied their bank accounts to help someone else's wedding not be a complete dumpster fire due to lack of planning. Wow, that's super rude. I can't believe OP didn't get this woman a wedding gift. What kind of selfish person spends $2,000 of their money to fund someone else's wedding and then won't give them a wedding gift? Maybe, can you create a mascot? Unfortunately, I do not create mascot logos. Okay then, can you help me create any logo that is a letter B? The channel theme is blue and white. Yes, for sure, if you're able to pay. We'll need examples as I mentioned first before I set a price. I have to pay? Yes. Lol, can't you do it for free, please? You know what, since you asked again, I will do it for free. Oh my god, seriously? Yes, why would I want to earn money from a skill like designing, which takes valuable time? I may as well just do all the work for free, am I right? Thank you so, so, so much. R slash whoosh. I live in an apartment house, so on my way down I meet a neighbor, I guess around 35-ish, a woman who just moved in with her son six months ago or so. So she asks, bringing your PC down to the basement? And I tell her it's just the case, and she's like, Oh, my son wanted to build one and he could need a case, could we maybe have it? And since I didn't need it anymore, I said, Sure, there's still all the cables and two fans inside, just some minor scratches on the case. I figured that'd be it, but then she asked, Would you mind helping him build the PC? He hasn't got any experience with that. 
Since this was only the second time I built a PC, I said, I am not that experienced either, and since PC parts can be quite expensive, I don't want to be at fault and lose your or his money if something breaks. There's a PC shop around the corner doing it for decent prices though. And she literally just said, oh, don't worry, it'll be fine. If something breaks, you can just replace it. And I'm like, what? Yeah, you're working after school, aren't you? So if it breaks, you could just replace it. And I'm like, bruh, I work at some sucky fast food chain for minimum wage. I'm not going to spend my free time building your son's PC and paying for damages. When you describe this woman, it honestly sounds like you're being sarcastic, but actually, it's all true. Hi, this is your neighbor from downstairs that you've never actually spoken to before. Since you're making those fat stacks working at McDonald's, I think you should buy computer parts for my son, build him a PC, and then pay for any damages that he incurs. Thanks. That was r slash choosing beggars, and instead of my normal outro, I've compiled sort of a blooper reel of what it's like to try and record a YouTube video when you have a puppy. We did come down the week before to attend the bachelorette party and my husband to host. I spent about $200 on bachelorette party gifts as another bridesmaid asked me to pick something up. I spent about 200 bucks on bachelorette party gifts as another bridesmaid asked me to pick something. I spent about $200 on bachelorette party gifts as another bridesmaid asked me to pick something up for her too and she wanted me to buy these. Hugo, man. The wedding happens. Everyone. The wedding happens. Dog, do you. I'm trying to record. Please, dog. Please. I, I need that court. No. No. You go. <laughs> you go, please. I need that court. I need it. I can't work without this court. Give me. Give me. Thank you. The car right. <laughs> you go. Ouch. Ow, dog. Eat your bone. Eat your bone. Here, eat this. Yum, yum. Eat this instead of my feet. Thank you.